He's Jamie Hunt. He's Pat Heath. And we are in ESP Europe in Berlin in the showroom. Today we're going to take you through a song that we've put together by listening to the band Slipknot and taking all the cool things that we can find. Thompson and Jim Root. Mm. Killer. Killer and very heavy. Very low. So yeah, exactly. The only way you can get in the zone really for this is to tune your guitar down significantly. You're not going to get with E standard. No. Drop D is not going to cut it. No. So you have to go down lower. So we're going to go down to drop B. Yeah. They obviously use lower tunings than that and other different drop tunings, but we're going to zone in on the drop B phase of their songwriting. Um, so that means tuning your low string... It's a bit like tuning to drop D, but going yeah. down a third further. Yeah. So you're going to tune your low string to B, then your fifth string to F sharp, then your fourth string to another B, then we get an E, a G sharp, and a C sharp. And that gives you drop B. Yeah. Now, one thing you have to do is be slightly careful with this, mm. because it means the strings are very flexible. Sure. Now, what that implies is when you hit the string very hard, you can actually put the... And hear that going sharp. Sharp and then it drops off again. Yeah. yeah, sure. So while we were recording this, we actually had to sit back mm. and pick more lightly yeah. and with less gain than you actually imagine. And I'm using a softer pick than I probably normally would for this kind sure. of music. We've got kind of chunkier strings on for this anyway. Yeah. So if you want to play in this realm... It's tuning on a regular basis, definitely go heavy strings because yeah. that will hold the intonation. You'll re retain that tension on the string. So that allows you to dig in a lot more. So yeah. when you're playing this stuff, you can't help but get carried away and excited. So if you're going to be doing this regularly, get yourself some heavy strings so you can put some welly in with a pick and your tuning will be stable. And remember that uh, if you've got a Floyd Rose trem, you'll need it set up properly mm. for that. For sure. We're in drop B. What else do we need to think about when we're doing Slipknot Pack? Well... I mean, one thing I noticed from playing through is the first thing is that because it's a drop tuning, the adjustment is to the power chords. Mm. So a power chord that would exist on, we'll call it the A string for now, which is this shape, which we normally think of as a fifth. On the two low strings, we'll call it the, the well, the B and the F sharp string your power chord becomes this shape, which is the shape of a fourth, but it's the interval of a fifth. The one finger power chord. One finger power yeah, chord. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. So in the drumming, there's lots of 16th notes and lots of fills on the feet and on the toms, and you need to be aware of that with your picking hand. Yeah. So we're going to try and replicate that. Now, quite often it's easy to rush. Sometimes you've got to sit behind. Mm. All right. So that's... Also, yes, if you rush, what tends to happen is that doesn't sound as heavy anymore. No. It feels like you're struggling to keep up and there's no kind of groove and weight to it. So if you can sit on the beat or even slightly behind the beat, even at high tempos, it just feels heavier. Yeah. So be mindful of the 16th notes, be mindful of the picking and the, along with the toms and mm. the kick drums. So looking at the first riff, what we're doing is we're playing off the open string, open B string. O to one, all right? Kind of like binary, all right? A lot of this music is O, one, O, all right? 
we've got a slide from the third fret to the sixth fret. That's what we've kind of created mm. around the idea anyway. <laughs> Things to think about when you've got those frets under your fingers is the palm mute inside of it, because it's very rhythmic, very chuggy, and that all locks in with the drum groove. So we don't want long extended notes where we don't need them, because that's going to lose that rhythmic definition. So we use a palm mute in... Combined with fret hand muting, so these fingers are coming down like a noise gate to stop those strings from ringing in the spaces. That's a dime back thing, really. Yeah, it is really, yeah. yeah. It's very tricky, but very cool if you get yeah. it right. So, one of the yeah. things about metal players um, at the top of their game that you'll start to take note of is their technique is ferocious, but also their muting abilities mm. are like first class. Yeah. So little things like that, using your fretting fingers in the gaps to stop those strings from ringing out and harmonics from sounding and all that kind of stuff, very important. We get this turnaround figure um, in the fourth bar where we play 16th notes all the way, single notes this time rather than power chords, and we get this little phrase. Yeah. Like that, with a little squealy pinch yeah. harmonic at the end. So that's those palm mutes again, keeping it really consistent, one E under, two E under, three E under, and on the beat four we get the... Bendy note. So, one, two, and when you do that, alternate picking all the way. Yeah. So it's really consistent. So you pick the string. That's literally my thumb hitting the string just after the pick. Yeah, the skin just brushes mm. the string, doesn't it? It lifts yeah. that harmonic up. Because all along your strings, you've got harmonics living along every point of the string yeah so what we're doing is really picking one particular moment of the string where a harmonic lives yeah and then the skin of your, your thumb that light brushing of it you don't need to put any weight onto it just some yeah. light brush Touch. of that string just lifts that harmonic yeah. out on the note that's right now you can find them we're actually doing it on this on the sixth fret which is quite a little bit of an awkward place to find a harmonic but if you just run your thumb along <laughs> Some will ring dead, all right? Yeah. They just won't. It'll be Not like you like yeah. you've made a mistake on guitar here, right? That sort of <laughs> clanky sound, and, and then sometimes yeah. you'll hit it and it'll <laughs> ring out, and that's what we're doing with the vibrato. Yeah. With the vibrato, yeah. So within that riff as well, that part which is on the turnaround, which is the end phrase or the last one, I'm actually picking an octave above. Now that is actually really easy to find in this tuning mm. because it exists on the other B string, which is this string here. And rather than I'm actually playing. And when you put those together, it gives you real atmosphere. Should we do that? Mm. Oh. They're known for their heavy, heavy stuff, um, but they've also got really memorable, catchy choruses yeah. in certain tracks. Some tracks are brutal all the way, yeah. but every now and again they pick out a track and it's got that big kind of anthemic sing -along songs, catchy chorus. Songwriting. Yeah. So, um, Pat, talk us through the chords that we're going to use for this kind of pseudo chorus section. Well, we'll look at the frets we're using, and that goes from to create the melodic passing and the melodic chord changes. We started on the sixth fret. <laughs> And then a power chord at the third fret mm. on the F sharp and B string. And then down to single notes one and three on the low string. Cool. To the fifth. Against Pat's chords, I'm playing a quite a melodic little figure just to give a little a extra little hook within this chorus type section. So I start by doubling the chords, then I break into octaves. So that means starting at the fifth fret, sorry, starting on the fifth string, third fret, nothing on the fourth string, and we're going to mute that, I'll talk about that in a second, and then the fifth fret of the third string. I'm going to use my little finger, you want to use your third finger and that feels more comfortable for you, that's cool. But essentially, the inside of your first finger, the kind of pad middle bit, that touches against the fourth string, and just keeps it from creating an note, you get kind of a dull sound. When you combine that with your high, the tip of the finger playing the higher note, and that touches the same string as well, that fourth string, so both strings are muting that out. If I play all three strings together, you still just get the two notes that I want you to hear. So that muting is important. Now the phrase, that shape all the way through, third fret, 
Fifth fret. Sixth fret. Back to the fifth. Down to the third. And slide it all the way up to the eighth. So let's try that half of the section cool. together. All right, let's so do one, that. two, three, and. Okay, so at that point, the chords go around again. We start with almost the same thing, back to our octave shape. It's third fret, fifth fret, sixth fret, back to fifth, back to third, and then slide back to the fifth fret, and then join Pat with the power chord at the fifth fret again to finish. So let's play that second half so we can hear that side of things. So one, two, three, and. Got some solo ideas in there. Yeah. Okay. Machine gun picking. Absolutely. So this falls over the, when the chorus section repeats in the song. Yeah. We're going to this time put a solo over it. Okay. So you were saying back to the machine gun picking point. Yeah. I mean, we just yeah. kind of did some trade offs, didn't we? On yeah. This, yeah. Really. Um, and basically, what I was playing was an idea that goes. And that gives Lee, Jay, Jamie leeway to then play yeah. his lead. Now, the important thing is you're picking all the way through. Now, a big thing about the lead style um, with Slipknot is that it's kind of relentless, ferocious yeah. picking. Um, it's very similar to a Slayer vibe yeah. in that it's got that franticness yeah. um, and sometimes that kind of dissonance as well. Yeah. So we're taking that ferocity with the picking. Everything's going to be picking from start to finish. There's no gaps or moments for kind of blues licks or anything like that. It's like picking all the way, fill every gap with a pick note. Yeah. I'm going to start with an ascending phrase along the high E string. So I'm using the frets 7, 8, and 10 on the high E in these little groupings. And I move up to the next position of the scale, so I'm using 8, 10, 11. And I move up again, I'm using 10, 11, 13. And I bring in the second string into play, so I run down those notes. I'm going to use 13, 11, 9 on the second string. I'm going to go up to my 15th fret, bend it, and then put some wide vibrato. And we get that little cool. close to the first part of the phrase. Then it goes back to you again, doesn't it? Yeah, and I'm basically playing the same thing, but I'm ending on a high note. So I'm going... Excellent. Back to me. And I carry on with the same kind of ascending theme that I had before. So this time I'm using frets 11, 13, and 15. <laughs> And then I go to 13, 15, 16. And then it's 15, 16, 18. Then I bring in that second string again. And then I go to the 22nd fret. Yeah. And give it some wide vibrato. So this is just our take on it. It's just what we dissected using our ears and our guitars, and you can do the same. Pull things apart, look for the common themes. That's the core of it, really, isn't yeah, it? Yeah, absolutely. Look for the things that catch your attention, work out how that's going on. So take the things that we've shared with you today, for example, as a starting point, and then, yeah, try your own phrases, your own scales, find your own grooves that you yeah, can yeah. put riffs and your own notes voice. to, and then those squealy harmonics, etc. cetera. Um, and then, yeah, find the riffs and the grooves that you like, and you'll create your own sound. Be creative. We'll see you next time.